after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned as sadaqat and sadaqat is the true reason for your wealth to be multiplied Allah mentioned the false and evil riba the riba which does not multiply your wealth but only multiplies your punishment and this here the riba the reason I don't like to use the word interest and I like to use the word riba is actually that there are things that people may call interest which are not riba in Islam and there are things which may be riba in Islam that people don't call interest okay. because riba is an Islamic terminology which has its rules to it and there are two types there's riba al-fadl and riba al-nasi'ah there's the riba al-fadl like gold for gold and silver for silver and so on when it's not hand for hand in the same sitting mithl be mithl yani equal for equal that's a type of riba and if you said interest people would not think of that any old gold for new gold people would not call it interest does that make sense if i went to the jewelry shop and said i have here some old gold how much of it can i use to buy this new gold and he says okay you're going to buy 50 grams of new gold just pay me 70 grams of your old gold would anyone call this interest yet it's riba in islam so be careful about the fact that riba is a terminology a specific terminology right as for the riba that was yani any riba nasi'a the riba that was known before that is the idea of what of accepting an increase in return for a delay in payment that's the general overview of it in in other words i will pay you later and in return for that i will pay you more money than what i borrowed from you or what i took from you and it has suwar kathira many different types of rulings well, many what? people don't understand what riba is and they fall into it without understanding it and wallahi riba has destroyed our society and it's everywhere from the student loans through to the people's credit cards people's uh, yani the banks people's transactions the money they spend so, so many things that riba mortgages that riba is involved in and ultimately this riba it destroys a person when a person comes yawm al qiyamah they will come like a one who is possessed by the shaitan another doubt people brought about riba they said dhalika bi annahum qalu innama al bay'u mithl al riba they said look buy riba is an essential part of trade what do you say, say to see people say today? They say you cannot escape it. Look, riba is just, you know, everybody does it. The Prophet included in riba, the one la'ana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, akila riba, wa mawkilahu, wa katibahu, wa shahidahu, wa qalahum sawa. He cursed the one who takes riba, and the one who gives riba, and the one who writes riba, and the one who witnesses riba, and he said all of them are the same. All of them are the same. Now, subhanAllah, if you think about that, all of them are the same. That means even signing a contract which has riba in it. So signing a contract which says, if I don't pay by the end of the year, I will pay riba, is the same as if you took riba yourself. All of them are the same. Humsawa, all of them are the same. But it's really important to understand. And the shubha is what? You can't survive. Life cannot go on. Trade cannot go on without riba. But there's a big difference. Allah made trade halal and Allah made riba haram and here there is a fundamental principle what is it it is the principle that al aslu fil buyu' the principle of transactions buying and selling is there halal somebody asks you am i allowed to sell fruit halal am i allowed to buy and sell things am i allowed to trade am i allowed to sell currency am i allowed to the basic the first ruling is what halal Except the things that Allah made haram. So that buying and selling is allowed, except what Allah, the limited number of things that Allah and His Messenger وسلم, told us are haram. And one of the fundamental things that Allah told us are haram is riba. Also, He told us that gambling is also haram, right? We've heard about gambling, we've heard about riba. So, those are two fundamental things that are for, prohibited in transactions. But the basic idea of what you're allowed to buy and sell and how you buy and sell is a matter where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it easy. There are, and there are certain things, limited situations where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it easy for us, like a taqsid, for example, doesn't fall under riba, uh, where somebody says, I will pay you in installments, we agree a price, or I pay you in cash, we agree a price. 
but they don't increase it. And it doesn't increase month by month. It doesn't change. Just say, look, is cash price or there's an installment price. So this is from the taysir that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought for this ummah. And now there came to you a mawidah, a lesson from Allah, an admonishment, a warning. So you take that warning and if you don't take it, then the, the danger, the threat is the threat of the fire.